Welcome to part two of our very special finance skills episode of the Renvi Show featuring Mr. and Mrs. Malkan. Experts of the stock market. In part one, it was all the basics, all the nitty gritties you have to go through as a beginner. Part two is all about your questions, which you sent in through Twitter. Lots to learn in part two. It's a little deeper. I do recommend you watch part one of this conversation before you enter part two of this conversation. But I'd also recommend that you follow us on Spotify. The Renvi Show will soon become a Spotify exclusive. When that happens, the audio versions of our podcast will be available only on Spotify. The audio versions of each episode will be available 48 hours before the video versions that you see on YouTube. Make sure you follow TRS on Spotify for a lot more information, for a lot more learnings, for a lot more life skills that you come across on TRS. Some financial learnings, some life skills on this part two of a special conversation with Mr. and Mrs. Malkan. to highlight this aspect because it's a trend right now uh, and I also have some money in crypto uh, but I also have some money in like traditional finance like most of my money is in traditional finance and that's that's the safety of it that's a tried and tested thing there are regulations uh, that's where you should actually multiply your money but what would you say about crypto as observers because you guys know the stock market and crypto mimics real world yeah. money right. uh, a lot of it not all the currencies but for example, Bitcoin is built out in the same way that gold was accepted by human society. Right. So what are your observations from the outside? So if I've been following crypto since a long time, since the time <coughs> it has started. And usually for us, it's like looking at a chart, whether it's a Bitcoin or a gold or silver or Nifty or Bank Nifty is the same for us. Like you are looking at the ECG of a person and we know that it's going up. We also know that it's good, but the only challenge, at least in India, is not fully regulated as much mm. as we would love to like what is in the West. The second, there is some kind of uh, limitations on, there's something called long and short. Mm. Like you go long, you buy and sell. There's something called a short, which we do in futures and options. You sell and buy. You short at a higher level and buy lower, which is not maybe allowed in many of the apps which are there on crypto right now. Mm. So I had this uh, uh, analysis of crypto a few days back and I was telling some of my friends in US that you should short crypt short Bitcoin. Means mm. you sell at a higher price at around 55 and buy at a lower price. But somehow in India, it was not able to do it. That's why I would say something which is not fully understood, fully regulated or fully you don't understand the logic behind it should be avoided. Once you start understanding it, then in playing crypto, especially it's very crazy right now with the youth, is like you're going to a, playing a World Cup without playing the gully cricket. Mm. You first trade stocks, mm. you trade options, futures, you have enough things to trade here. Mm. Ultimately, when you look at the percentage return, ultimately it drives down to whether you invest 10,000 or 1 crore, you're looking at a percentage return. Yeah. So percentage return, if you look at, let's say Bitcoin went from 30,000 to 60,000 in last six months. Tata Steel also went to more than double than that. Mm. From 400 to 1200. It's just sexy you're talking about crypto. Absolutely. More popular. Mm. Right. So and like that, there are so many stocks in Indian stock market, which you actually understand it's regulated by Indian government or what we call SEBI. And it is doable. Some crypto is something fancy, which we don't understand maybe, but we want to do it just because it is fancy. So I personally have refrained from trading it, but I track charts and I can do an analysis of crypto as good as I can do for a Tata Steel. Mm -hmm. So I don't think if you are looking for a return in, in terms of percentage, Indian stocks are much better to trade. And plus nowadays, as we also been calling since last six, eight months in our programs that we are starting a bull market. You know, bull market comes once in five years and it lasts for three to four years. Like you saw a bull market in 2004, you saw a bull market in 2014 and now it has started after the COVID thing. Although it looks scary outside, but the market says something else. If you've seen markets have been rising because it sees the future, it's a leading indicator. Mm. Market gave a reaction of COVID once bad, like last March 2020. But since then it's been on an upward trajectory. So if you look at a bull market, you can really, if you can capture bull market, one bull market in your life, that can make you a fortune. How much money would you need as capital to say make a crore from a bull market? If you if you have skills, if you have put in hard work. 
ओके सो दैट कैन बी आई हैव टू पुट अ डिस्क्लेमर दैट इट्स नॉट फॉर एवरी वन यू नीड दैट स्किल यू नीड दैट नॉलेज एंड यू नीड दैट काइंड ऑफ मे बी ऑल्सो काइंड ऑफ फ्लेयर फ्लेयर और ग्रिट टू पुट मनी इन द स्टॉक मार्केट एंड होल्ड ऑन फॉर दैट लॉन्ग इफ आई लुक एट लेट्स इवन इफ आई पुट मनी इन मेटल्स राइट इन द लास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स और एट मंथ्स आई वुड हैव डबल्ड माई मनी so if i have to make a crore i have to make 50 lakhs in 6 months which is a good return now let's say if i trade slightly uh, more uh, exotic instrument called futures and options there i might have to i i can make a crore out of 20 lakhs also but then that requires that kind of temperament to hold and have the strategy and it has the risk of going down also but broadly only equity based if you see so many stocks have doubled or tripled in last 6 months to 8 months or even in last one year so if you take a gauge like 25 to 40 lakhs if you have and you want to make that crore it's much easier in a year if you have a longer time frame you can have multiple like ways to make money by mul- switching in and out of stocks maybe you can even start with 10 lakhs and after 5 years you can land up to become a crore pati mm. wow with all comes <laughs> with a disclaimer kind of right <laughs> it looks very 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 uh, kind of what you call sexy or very very attractive but whoever is listening this is not the way you have to think right now you have to think about how i can learn you should be hungry for learning mm. learning learn stock market is never going to close in fact more markets are opening as a youngster you first think about how can i get this skill right then the rest of your life you can make money so what will happen if that number of 4% of indian stake under stock market goes up to 40 or 50% how will it affect the market forget about 40 if it goes to 10 there will be huge inflow of money in the market which will come to the corporate companies and they will grow like anything and the whole country will go like what we are talking about superpower india becoming superpower by 2030 that one thing which i just you said is important that 4% has to essential. go to 10 yeah. yeah 4% has to go to 10 or 12 or 15 then then nobody can stop india because the number of youth the population which we have is incredible right mm. but for that the way you think about stock market has to change yes mm. it doesn't have to be that risky or jua or gamble or whatever you call like it. if you go in educated you actually helping the country yeah that's what i've got to move on to the q and a's because those are the questions sent in by all the stock market aficionados so this is from our twitter verse which lately has become a hub for like financial knowledge and learning in general definitely it's centered around crypto but if you actually explore twitter you'll find a lot of people who know other aspects of finance well okay so this is our twitter verse round uh very simple question first suprit k asks is stock market for everyone yes is it not for some people i would actually rephrase that like is there any kind of personality type that shouldn't be in stock market according to you the person who doesn't want to learn mm lazy lazy like if you're lazy don't take part mm okay would you would you agree to that 100% uh so okay kush rajput another very wide question but i'm going to ask it anyway how to select a stock second part of the question how to make a profit off of a short term investment okay how to select a stock is basically you check the rsi which is relative strength index of course i can't explain it right now but there are so many videos there it's i give you a kind of a thumb rule uh, rsi is like a speedometer between 0 to 240 is your speedometer this is between 0 to 100 if the rsi of that stock especially if you are looking for short term that means you are looking at the daily rsi is about 60 you buy that stock within few days you can make that money mm mm-hmm. and uh, that okay cool so you answered i think both the questions sir um okay this is interesting aniket panchal asks information about the tax system with respect to the stock market how do taxes work with respect to stock market okay there are only basic three three, uh, three tax slabs one is the short term trading one is the derivative trading and the long term trading mm-hmm. it's ba- very basic you just google it and you'll know it it's changed over long term is like 15% like if you hold for more than 365 days and then sell it you'll have to pay 15% if you do in derivatives it's like a business income you have to pay 33% of the tax mm-hmm. so that's that's basic stuff got it um what app do you guys think is the best for trading in stock market this is a question from arnab layak or are there apps like okay there are many apps, many apps yeah. if you are looking at uh, analyzing the charts the technical part then uh, investing.com is the best 
and as far as trading i think any broker who gives you a good app like even you go for the main brokers like motilal oswal or sher khan or right. angel broking or you go for the discount brokers like you have zero da and upstocks and grow although we are not affiliated with any one yeah. of them but this is the general info main broker versus discount broker mm. what is a discount broker where the, it's like uh, cheap brokerage where you can trade for really very less brokerage there are some maybe pros and cons of each of them but nowadays everything is at par so you see so many apps up, up stocks and zero that i think to start with they both are great mm, they also say that this is the age of fintech suddenly and and are you guys also seeing the difference that fintech has made like financial tech Absolutely. i'm guessing there's more money poured yeah. in absolutely because so it's become so much easy like you just it's like using facebook and you are using a app to buy and sell mm. i when i was in 1996 is was i used to draw charts with hand wow on 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 a graph paper to analyze the chart wow. <laughs> and one chart would take one hour so i can at least do five only now you can look at 50 stocks in one minute so i think it's great mm. okay uh, next question is from sanjit keswani is from our team um will artificial intelligence play a role in the stock market going forward according to you guys it is already playing a role to some extent where we say or algo trading and all that but to a common man algo trading is not that you just have to trade one or two trades in a day or week or something like that algo trading is mainly for people who have high frequency trading mm. with big numbers especially like a big fund house or a hedge fund and all that so but whatever it is let's say even the algos are trading and the big people are trading the fias and all everything is captured on the graph so if you know how to analyze the graph you can trade mm got it and you think you can teach a machine how to analyze the graph yes there are certain systems which we teach like say okay you have to buy about this or sell about this you can program it and you can even run it automatically mm. right so especially if you want to handle multiple markets so let's say there i am the single person and i am trading crypto also and currency also and equity also so i can put some algos somewhere they can take care of certain stocks and certain stocks i can trade so yeah that de- definitely but Uh, as a beginner or a youth investor or a youngster it just start with the b- traditional way of yeah. trading yeah so in my final year of college my optional subject was neural networks which is ai and my project in my final year was designing a stock market predictor oh, really? oh wow. yeah <laughs> and we put in hours into it hours and we studied how stock markets work we had a financial expert guiding us he was a mentor like in engineering in your final year you have one finance or business based subject mm-hmm. so that guy was a mentor along with the second mentor who was an ai specialist now the ai specialist the finance specialist and this team of pretty active and smart like we had a smart team we still couldn't crack it because it was a very complex project and the finance guy was very hopeful about it because of the whole team but it just wasn't yeah it still wasn't on point also to really train an ai it takes time like it takes like 3 4 years to really get a good quality mm. ai made mm. so i i feel like maybe this is a business model for the future like 10 years in 20 years and people will be selling algorithms yes it already is is it's, it's already yeah. people are selling algos and systems is it is it accurate yeah see there are still there is some kind of human intervention required if there is some kind of you see you must have seen some flash crashes crashes in the market mm. like, like a dow jones goes down 1000 points and comes back again because that was an algo which didn't go right and it created a lot of losses in for <laughs> people and it has happened in indian market also a couple of times so it's still at the i would say nascent stage and needs that kind of trajectory for few years to grow mm. how but okay say if we are living in 2050 how do you think the stock market will change with all this ai inbuilt i if she can answer that because uh, the human emotions are not going to change mm. hope greed and fear and you are going to behave in the same manner when you are into greed hope and fear and the patterns will keep repeating it's been there since 100 years what we are using technical analysis of very old science mm. right so it's still working and it's getting better actually mm. so if you have the right technical knowledge whether it's 2050 or 2020 you can sale through Or the market even if you know in a general parlance from the common man's point of view if you talk in terms of scams 
a scam that happened in 1992 harshad mehta scam that we're talking about it's a similar scam that are still happening mm. you saw the satyam thing that came out you know it's a similar thing why do they keep repeating even after d cases because it's a human beings mm. it's a human emotions that come to the forefront and cause you to make the same mistake so even if the world advances the fintech you know whatever changes that we see in ai whatever terms but if it's us humans who are part of it we are going to be repeating the same things again and again mm. I think the way I look at it, uh, people will build out AI algorithms, basically robots which are like your friend to kind of co-invest with you. In terms of you'll have like someone suggesting that Akbar and Birbal will happen. Huh. That's <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be that interesting. Uh, and again, I've, I've read, I've been studying AI for the sake of one of my startups, and we are. It is definitely going to steal jobs away from people, but there's a long way to go. It will change yeah. things drastically into the investment world as well. Yeah. 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 this is an author called Yuval Noah Harari who I'm a, like I'm the biggest fan of and uh, his book is Sapiens and uh, 2021 oh, yes. uh, 21 lessons for the 21st century we keep bringing it up on this podcast and the criticism we get for bringing him up is why are you repeating stuff from those books because if you ever read those books you'll understand how much information is in that guy's head mm-hmm. and how much he's been able to predict because of his study of history yeah. Like what he said about patterns repeating, emotions repeat. Yes. He's also predicted the future based on like studying history, and he's spoken a lot about AI stealing jobs, but not in our life lifetime. So what comes out of this conversation is that you have to constantly upgrade your knowledge. Yeah. yeah. What what brought you here will not take you there. Mm-hmm. So you keep. Con- we also learn a lot. Now, although we have been teaching, but we also learn because market changes. The behavior of the market changes. New instruments come. New rules come. and this like new thing crypto has come so we study we have to keep upgrading our skills all the time and also uh, there's something called as one is called informative education and one is called transformative education informative is like you learn about a subject like a technical analysis or a or a maths or science mm. you study it you master it a transformative education what she deals with like you have to deal with your own emotions all the time you cannot it's say i mastered my emotion yes. mm, 100% so that constant motivation coaching because you always go through challenges and you bring down your motivation you lose focus so you need some guidance so we keep going back to our gurus like tony robbins and many other people who have been coached so we continue this the main thing is be a lifelong learner mm. that's the message i would like to give to the youth of so that no don't stop at your formal education mm. keep growing keep learning keep growing keep learning ankit kumain asks i think ma'am you should answer this how should one cope up with a bad trade what's the mindset after a bad trade oh i love that so bad trade is nothing but you know when you talk about trading as a business we just mentioned that so business may there is when you do a business there will be a lot of you know whole variety of situations that you will encounter in a business sometimes you'll make profit sometimes your production goes cost goes high and you don't make as much profit so it's like when you take trading as a business it's like you have to be prepared to encounter every situation that a business encounters mm. you are not going to shut down your business just because you had a small loss mm. you'll take it as a part of your business so that is what we call as you know the, when you make a loss what we teach is loss is the cost of doing the business of trading Mm. there's no the cost right you don't need an office you don't need anything you can even trade from your mobile phone these days mm. but what is the real cost is your loss that's that's what the real cost is in that moment how would you ask them to bounce back okay. it's like you know when you make it as a process what happens in a process is process driven and what the best way that we explain it is like you know just that when you're trading with a system or we're trading with a method it's like the method and the system is making money for you it's like you know you don't say i made the money you say my system made the money my system made the profit and my system made the loss in a you know in real land uh, real life analogy in spirituality there's a term called surrender mm. you just need to surrender right for to the higher to the highest good mm. it's like in the trading world you need to surrender to your system mm. once you develop a good system and you know you have a system that suits your temperament and it's good for you to go with you surrender to the system let the system do its job of making money or losing money mm-hmm. all that you have to do is you have to focus on following the system mm-hmm. that's all mm-hmm. again through a lot of learning through mindset building which is what needs to be highlighted okay uh, this is a question from raghav from our team uh could you all expand on us stocks investing in us stocks sitting in india uh it's a hot topic currently in the whole 
uh, world of finance. I think India also just woken up to the fact that we can invest in can US invest stocks. In. Yeah, I think uh, oh. that's possible. US stocks through certain brokers we can trade in US stocks, and you can have a limit to a part- particular amount of money, which is substantial for a common man to do it. And it's like for us, if you look at, if you show me a graph of let's say Apple, or if I look at the chart of uh say something called reliance for us the buying decision and the selling decision is based on the same parameters as well. so if you can if you see an opportunity there where the stock is in a super hyper trend and you can make money definitely you should and it will be another kind of an instrument or set of instruments where you can trade and make money so uh, stocks anywhere in the world if you can trade the analysis remains the same that's why we say technical analysis is a, is a global or a universal study mm. it's like when you study an ecg let's say if i look at an ecg of your ecg or her or her his is the same thing i'm going to analyze i don't look at oh he's ranveer or he's she's meghna it's like the chart says buy means buy mm. oh it's apple then buy oh it's reliance then buy so that way it is a universal study and that's the best thing if you are relocated to some other country later you can tra- trade that stock market as well and the same thing for commodities also now if, if again we are coming back to crypto part it but if you look at commodities like the copper the silver and the zinc and aluminum they have also gone up too much and there also is an opportunity to trade you can trade that market through mcx it's a multi commodity exchange so once you learn this skill of technical analysis you can trade anywhere in the world so in the same way that people have gotten introduced to the us stock market and you mentioned uh, mcx yeah what other you know options do you have in terms of where you can diversify using the same stock market skills the same stock market skills you can use national stock exchange which has the normal equity it has the futures and options the th- these are the three different types of instruments then there is multi- mcx which is the multi commodity exchange where you can trade in silver and gold and copper and crude and all that mm. then you have this us market through a couple of brokers where you can trade the us stock markets mm-hmm. and then you can trade commodities there in we call it the nymax or the the C, cmot mm-hmm. where you can trade gold and silver in dollar terms got it but both are broadly the same because if it goes up here it will go up here also and there's also currency and then there's currency market which is the usd inr and few of the currencies are listed here and you can even trade international currency what we call the forex mm-hmm. now uh i again it becomes very fancy okay i trade forex and it's a 24 hour market and but at the same time the time is there so you have to keep tracking the market throughout the day throughout like 24 hours almost mm. so when it comes to indian stock market you have that liberty by 330 or free mm. and you will go to those other markets if i have to trade ultimately you want to make money right so if this markets indian markets are saturated and they are not going anywhere like a developed economy we are a developing in- economy so there will be growth sectors and growth stocks so that is enough for us to trade rather than going some other stock where we don't know what timing at 2 o'clock in the night you are changing your stop loss and orders and all that so I, at one point of time like few years back i used to do all that it looks fancy on feel that great high that okay i'm trading all around the world but i said oh i have a daughter i have to look after <laughs> i have a son then i have to look after him also i have to play with him so let's focus on indian stock market Mm. at the most indian commodity markets mm. and then go outside if you have that huge money like you go into hundreds of crores where your indian market is not enough to take that money as a depth then you go to the other current currency market or whatever market is otherwise for a common man indian stock market right now is like a gold mine mm. if you just need the mining skills mm. here's a slightly hatke question again from me mm. now when you were when you were talking about you get support from your partner So I was trying to draw it into your lives with stock market, and I'm sure you guys, because you all have experience now, you all have settled down in the head in terms of you all are very calm with your process. That's not the case when you're young, you know. Like when you're young, you're very fiery in the head, especially if you're doing something like you're trying to get, uh, you know, success in the stock market. Hmm. And I understand that uh, you'll get support from your partner, you'll calm down, and you'll kind of be more well rested to go back into the stock market and become more successful. The question to you is. that is there a certain level of creativity required in the stock market because i feel like even creativity gets refueled in a through love have you read napoleon hill no i have that's what he talked about yeah so he yeah there is certain amount of uh, variety or creativity which as a human mean you need and i as i said in the past that 95% of the people who trade stock market they trade for that thrill or variety moment because that gives that adrenaline rush 
right so i would say that to have something creative or something different or that thrill part you do something else but not stock market stock market is systematic so stock mar- make stock market like a process driven thing and very very boring wow and once it gets boring then the real money will show up mm. like like let's say if have you seen people like <laughs> have you seen people like who uh who must have seen like oh i made this money oh i told you it will go up oh maine bola tha dekh upar gaya that is that is the guy who's for thrill like if you ask warren buffett who made millions of dollars he's like i easy excited oh that's my normal job it's boring <laughs> I'm just I'm glad I did this episode with you. You're giving like some crazy content. That's probably not out there as much. Uh again, I I just got to learn. So, screw the content. I mean, don't screw the content. Please share it. <laughs> uh, uh okay. Um another interesting question from Shivam Kapoor. Uh, are you guys familiar with blockchain technology? So, okay. Uh, some part of it, yeah. I think the question's from a basic angle only. Um Do you think there is an application of blockchain technology in uh, the stock market going forward, and can companies in the future get money from people using blockchain tokens instead of IPOs? Yes, we have heard it from many people that the future of currency is the tokens and that NFTs and all that. But till the time it doesn't get real, I would still try to explore it, not completely negate it. Also, at the same time, I'm open to learning it. Let it come. and it will have its own time and we'll have time to explore you see it coming yeah we as we have we have following certain coaches and certain trainers in the us and they have been very vocal about it that this is going to be the future mm. like you look at gary v he has started his own tokenization that v friend something so of course there is some logic to it if some so many big people are putting head into this there is some logic to it but i would say rather than uh, trial and error or rather than ex- predicting something let it come to us we'll explore it it's another market maybe it will open up new opportunity i see it as an opportunity and we'll grab it ayush gautam asks i have heard experts saying intraday trading is the game of experienced professionals and it's not meant for everybody how true is it should a beginner or amateur start day trading what are your thoughts okay that's a great question i would like to give a proper guidance to people who want to do intraday trading intraday trading is again like that thrill ride which you are having because you get that rush of making money in few minutes if you take it systematically and professionally with a proper system it can really make good amount of money but it requires tremendous amount of temperament mm-hmm. now what is that let me break down that let's say an intraday trading versus a long term trading intraday trading within that span of 6 hours of market you have to decide to buy sell not to buy not to sell partially buy partially sell is your brain capable to take that many decisions versus that one decision which you have to take in a month to buy or not mm. so if you can have that split second kind of reaction and can that kind of what we call in cricket we call reflexes then you are meant for intraday trading maybe you using one particular system and making good money in intraday i using it completely can fail because i don't have your temperament mm. and most people as a beginner will not have it mm. whether you are a 2020 player you still have to go and do some net practice and some play some ranji trophy and all that so you have to get your hands through then only you can go into intraday so i would not suggest as a beginner or a startup you should go into intraday first learn the basics through a short term medium term trade once you get the hang of it that you can take that decisions then you switch into intraday mm. and psychologically also what happens is intraday is more number of decisions the more number of the more amount of fatigue your brain goes through right mm. so that's why it's like you know intraday traders they have faster burnouts wow you see them they have short term careers because a burnout happens much faster more short, number of decision short term career matlab why does the career end like they don't come back like it's they lose the, money it's the fatigue that takes over right it's the brain fatigue that takes over if you read dr amen he talks about you know the number of decisions that your brain makes per second intraday suppose even if you take two trades that's like way too many decisions that you're making compared to a longer term trades so that is like more fatigue and hence the shorter career here wow it's it's so personality based it's so much psychology that's it's what people so much, that's what we say that it's 80% of it is psychology systems can you believe it the best system that makes that has made us so much of our money and for students as well it's free on youtube mm. it's free you just see that system there the best running system but how many people are able to make money from that very few because you need that psychology to you know follow that system consistently wow beautiful uh which is why from the outside looking and i admire my brothers nikhil and nitin kamath these two guys uh, they are famous for their temperament 
Yeah, uh, they are. Yeah. So, and, and once you hang out with them, you, you come to realize that they're just different guys, cut from a different cloth. So, anyway. Um, okay. Shashwat Shagun Pandey asks, um, can we use mutual funds where money is invested by us and is handled by professional traders to generate higher returns? I'd also probably add a PMS firm uh, kind of angle here. Like, again, if, if you're on, like, say, for example, someone in a media industry where you have a lot of things to do where you're supposed to put your energy into creatives, should you rely on PMS firms and mutual funds too? I would say that uh, it's like you, when you put in put your hard and money in, with an expert, you have to do, do your due diligence properly. On the expert. On the expert, right? Because, and the same expert can also go wrong. And if you are sticking to an expert, you have to stick for, for a really long time. Because every expert will also have a bad year. It's like a bad form. Virat Kohli will get out at zero certain times. That doesn't mean he's a bad batsman, but he's in bad form. Mm -hmm. The same thing can happen to a trader or a mutual fund expert also. My strong suggestion would be is to un learn the thing yourself and then hand it over to someone. Then you can also know that where he went wrong, okay. how he went it's wrong. It's like learning a new language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the mutual fund will come and guy will say, oh, you lost money. Mm -hmm. So, and you say, oh, you just, you can't do anything about it. And you said, okay, my bad luck. But once you know the market and then you hand it over to someone, then you know what he's doing, whether it's a really a bad trade or a bad decision or it was just a bad judgment. Mm -hmm. So then you can cope up with that. You can modify as per your. So say, so if you dedicate one hour of your day every day um, for a year, will you be equipped enough? Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. That's great, and actually, everybody should do it at this moment. We are on a bull market. We have so much of youth population, and especially nowadays, work from home is so so rampant. So you have some time. If you just spend half an hour, one hour a day to learn this skill, within a year you can go leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of information available, whether you talk about paid courses or free courses. But you can really learn a lot. So there, definitely, it should be a mandatory. Like I would like to, if I, it's my power, I put a subject like stock market in school. <laughs> mm. One period every every day you have to learn that will make a big difference in youth. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it's not that crazy a thought what you're saying. Maybe in thirty years, forty years time we might see that because again, if we're working in the creative industry, we're seeing how much of a lack of skills there are, and we have to teach everyone the skills in office. Right. Rather than that, if you teach kids yeah. those skills, it'll be beneficial for their minds also. They'll be happier people growing up. Yeah. Imagine teaching a kid creative writing, like good creative writing. How much of that kid's traumas can come out through his like, yeah, creativity and writing? Uh, or again, if you teach a kid meditation as part of the physical education. Absolutely. What can that do for a child's brain? Basic question, Shanu Jain asks, if you're not from a finance background and if you have zero knowledge about it, where can we begin learning about it? Click on the link below. We'll give you a, <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a basic course right, right from zero. We learn a free access to the course which teaches you what is technical analysis, what is a chart and what is RSI, what is candlestick, right from basic. Uh, do you all also have regional language courses? I usually use English, like Hindi okay. and English. So that's the two languages we can... Got it, got it, got it. Um, from the content world, regional is going to see a boom in the next 10 years, over the next 10 years. Not like right now it's mainly Hindi and English, but other languages are suddenly starting to pick up in terms of content. That's what we're observing. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, that's that looks... Geo, Geo has reached out like to yeah. corners of the country. You know, that's what I like about the world of business and just industries in general. It takes one gutsy move for the whole industry to pick up their game and then change culture. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, another question from me, actually, like, what do you learn about human culture after trading for so long in the stock market? About human culture, not human psychology. Okay. So, culture is like uh, Indian culture, if you talk about there's too much of, uh, since we have come from slavery, if from hmm. the Britishers, so we have this scarcity mindset, one. Second, we have this uh, mindset which says, too much money is too not, not too good. Hmm. If I have too much money, I lose it. Or if people who have too much money have done something wrong. So this kind of thought process, like if you talk about in India, if you say, I want to be a crorepati or I want to be a millionaire, your, your parents will say, okay, sit down. You can't be, a, you can't, you are not an Ambani and all that. Mm. But in the same thing, are you in the West, a guy or a youngster will say, oh, I want to be a millionaire. And then they, okay, great. Mm. What, what help do you need? Mm. 
so that's a big difference between the cultures and the thinking process which needs to change because if you love money if you make more money it doesn't make you a bad person you know and i'll tell you the business angle of this what you're saying uh, is that most businesses in the country start with only saying okay i'll become national level they don't look beyond that because they don't have the guts to say i'll go to even usa and africa and i'll excel my stuff there yeah. right so i think this country needs guts more than anything at this stage yes. uh, and it's it's possible like one thing i've realized from the podcast and from doing some international business is that we are more than capable in terms of on an international level yes. So, for example, like when we were researching about AI and how to incorporate AI into our startups, our assumption was that the American guys who are good with AI are way better than the Indians. And we found out actually the Indians are at the same level. It's just that there isn't enough opportunity here, and there isn't enough of an arena to showcase. So, next ten years again, if there are young entrepreneurs listening to this, which I'm sure that there are, like aim for the moon, like aim for an international stage. Uh, it'll change everything, and I see that happening over the next twenty years. Prashant Parab asks about COVID specifically during the pandemic. Why has stock market remained positive? And maybe some post-COVID predictions also, according to you. Okay, so uh, I had done a video on the COVID analysis and why markets are going up on after the COVID. So we, when the COVID was hit first time in the in the to 2020, and during February March, we had a huge crash, big crash. That was one of the biggest in the history. and that was because market crashes when there is some scam or when there is some natural calamity or there is something which people don't understand and there is so much of uncertainty mm. so first time when the covid hit we were uncertain whether we'll survive or not whether there is an end to this or not now that second wave or third wave we understand things are recovering there is vaccination and then there is people in the other countries are already vaccinated and doing better so it's we know that what will happen so stock market is a discounting mechanism mm. and it will not discount the same thing twice the covid has been discounted in 2020 mm. now if there is a bigger or a newer problem comes to the world then only the market will crash now stock market is looking 2022 and 23 mm. it's not looking at the current situation so how the and if you study the history and the cycles behind after every pandemic we know the pandemic comes every 100 years that's thanks to the internet we got that but after every pandemic there is a huge boom huge mm. one in every sector or sector almost and which we are already experiencing in some of them which is just the beginning and that's why i say it's the start of a bull market and it's a great time to be in stock market and this is just the tip of it and it's not just the market the the financial economy you'll see that everywhere mm. it's just that you need to be prepared you need to prepare yourself in terms of skill set and in terms of mindset to be part of that boom it's that i think the consensus of this entire conversation with all of its angles was that get to your process of learning keep that as a habit i'm sure you guys even now study and learn about the stock market a lot a lot i think this podcast was an attempt to get the youth into it to get people who are kind of just starting out and while we market it to the youth it's obviously for everyone for, adults, for well. everyone so uh, and i think the other takeaway is that the more people that take part in the stock market the more everyone benefits including your country including yes. you know it's a bigger larger benefit for all including yeah. yourself so one thing i'd like to highlight is please guys share this video as much as you can with people who would appreciate it of course i'll be linking all of your handles your course down below uh, i am deeply grateful for the 101 tuition i got uh, <laughs> opened up my eyes to so many things and while the world is bullish on crypto and that's still something that the world is finding out i think a tried and tested machine like the stock market should be understood in detail It's yes. not just money making skills you'll get from it. You learn life, you learn psychology, you learn about yourself. You learn about yourself as the biggest yeah. biggest takeaway from this. Yeah. So maybe some signing off note to a beginner from both of you all. Uh first of all I would like to thank you for being be to invite us on this show which is uh, I think a great show and you are a youth icon and we even my son watches your video and my son's friends watch it and they were like can we come can we come we want a photo. <laughs> and i said okay we'll do it post covid right now situation so you are a great uh, icon as far as youth is concerned because you started early you went went through the journey i've seen your podcast and so that that's what the the country needs some inspiration someone has to lead someone has to show that i can do it you can do it 
so i am truly grateful for both of us being on this show and and also to make us so comfortable that we shared our hearts out we were not like corporate kind of an interview <laughs> and i know it got le- uh, longer than what we thought but we shared our whatever whatever best was there so how was your experience oh it was wonderful thank you ranvi thank oh, you for I mean. having us over and thank you for making us feel comfortable and as as you know you already mentioned into the takeaway but uh, i would like to say that uh, personally from my experience coming from where i have come from this is something that anybody can do it let mm. not anyone tell you otherwise mm. you come from any background you don't need to be a i used to consider myself as someone you know not so good with maths in spite of that i could do it mm. so anyone can do it and a special message message especially for women out there it's your world it's just that you just have to go out walk it out and own it up it's that way you know and it's all it's all there for you just just take it take the biggest pie that you can out of the whole thing you know you just need that confidence from within that you can do it i think yeah i think it's learning and guts those are the two main keywords from this podcast <laughs> and both are connected if you have more learning you'll have more guts because now you know it <laughs> for sure keep uh-huh. keep at it keep, keep at it with yes. the process yeah. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Malkan. Love thank your you, story. Thank, thank you. you so much for being. Thank you so much for having us here. I'm truly grateful. Thank you. Mm. We had a complete ball having this uh, interview. I'm grateful as well, and I hope that for the next twenty years of human existence, this podcast keeps teaching people stuff. Sure. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much.